So this video is a demo on how to do return programming using Kali Linux and Windows 7. The first step is to develop an exploit that works with Data Execution Prevention, or DEP, disabled. On the attacker system, run ifconfig to get the IP address to be used in developing the exploit code. Using Metasploit's, pay Metasploit's MSF payload command, um, we develop shell code for reverse TCP shell from the Windows system to the attacker system. So once the shell code is generated, copy and insert it into the exploit into the exploit payload template provided. Save the exploit file and make sure that it is executable. On the victim machine, run the Vuln server application and run ipconfig to get the IP of the victim machine. That will be used later in the exploit. Back on the attacker system, open the listener on port 443 and execute the exploit code. Going back to the listener, you can see that we are on the victim machine and our exploit is successful. So now we turn on DEP on the victim machine to prevent arbitrary code from being executed. To do so, right click on Computer, Properties, Advanced Settings, and under Performance, select Settings. In the window that pops up, select the Data Execution Prevention tab and turn on DEP for all programs. Restart the machine to have the changes take into effect. Once the system is restarted, run the Vuln Server application once again. Back on the attacker machine, restart the listener on port 443 and execute the same exploit. As you can see, nothing happens on the listener. In addition, the Vuln server application crash and the exploit fails because of DEP enabled. To get the exploit working again, we use ROP in order to bypass DEP. Restart the Vuln server application once again, and we use, Mon we use the immunity debugger and the Mona PY script in order to identify potential gadgets to use in order to bypass DEP. The idea is that these gadgets will allow us to control data flow in the Vuln server application. Execute the mona.py command and let it find gadgets from all the DLLs that the application uses. So once the script is done running, open the rop chains.txt file to see the gadget discovered and the gadget chain that it built. So the register is set up for virtual protect section as shown here, highlighted, displays what we need to do in order to successfully take control of the application. If we scroll down further to the Python section, we'll be able to see the exact code to use in our exploit. Copy this code and insert it into a copy of the previous exploit script. Make sure to replace the EIP variables in the padding and attack variables with the new ROP chain code. Also, don't forget to import the required modules, struct, and sys that is used by the new ROP chain code. Save the file and make sure that it is executable once again, and restart the listener in port 443 and execute the new exploit code. As you can see on the listener, we are able to execute commands once again on the victim machine. Therefore, the ROP chain works and a reverse TCP shellcode was executed.